Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and this is the second part of a video looking at non-price determinants of demand, the impact of a change on, of income on normal and inferior goods. Just a quick review. Inferior goods, one example could be generic brands offered from uh, perhaps the supermarket. They have their own black and white packaging, perhaps for their particular uh, generic brand and it's a perhaps of a lower quality maybe the taste is not so good and we expect that as incomes falls households increase their demand for these generic brands because uh, household income is low and they're trying to stretch those dollars consume the necessities and buying perhaps buying perhaps goods of a lower quality um, if incomes are rising then people can switch away from the generic brand and they can afford the name brand or higher quality good and these are going to be the examples we use for the change in income brand name being the normal good the generic brand being the inferior good in the previous video we saw singapore is a great example of rising gross national income over time and in this video we're going to particularly focus on what happens when incomes fall so in that previous video we saw that in 1963 Gross national income in Singapore was about, here we see, nine, uh, 530 US dollars per person per year, household income on average. And it rose over time due to their investments in education, a long run investment, and it rose to $27,730 in 1997. And so in that previous video, we saw as incomes rise, what's the impact on the demand for normal and inferior goods? In this video, let's look at what happens when incomes falls. So here we see in 1997, this is the Asian financial crisis, uh, gross national income fell from $27,000 approximately to $22,000. Or in 2014, it fell from $56,000 to um, 53,000 but here's a better example 1997 so incomes are falling from 27,000 to 22,000 dollars what is the impact on the demand for normal inferior goods so we have this additional variable of income okay and we're going to assume that income is falling and the symbol for income is y so we're going to see that income is falling for the household. What happens to the demand for normal goods? Demand, we would expect, would fall. If households are generating less income, they will not be able to afford the higher quality normal goods. So demand should, in theory, decrease for the normal good from D1 to D2. reducing the quantity of consumption from Q1 to Q2, or from point A along D1 to point B along D2. What's the impact on the total revenue? It's reduced for firms that are offering <clears throat> normal goods. So illustrating that again, I'm gonna highlight these rectangular boxes, since total revenue is price times quantity, we're going to go ahead and label this. Here is, oops, is this better? Here is A and B. Okay, so a few notes here. Before the fallen income total revenue is equal to the price of p1 multiplied by the quantity of consumption along v1 which is q1 and that's equal to the surface areas of a plus b all right but as incomes fall demand shifts inward total revenue for firms offering normal goods will be decreasing. There's no change in price. Price is constant P1 multiplied by a reduced quantity of Q2 which is e equal to area A. So here we see that as incomes fall, demand for the normal good 
falls. So that's a positive causal relationship. They move in the same direction. And we also notice that total revenue falls. What about inferior goods? If incomes are falling, if incomes are falling, households are sensitive to prices. They want to consume their uh, necessities such as food and other necessities. They will not be able to afford the higher quality normal good. They're going to switch over to the inferior goods. So here we see the demand for the inferior goods rise from D3 to D4. Price is constant P3, but we see an increase in the quantity of consumption of those inferior goods from Q3 to Q4, from point C to point D along the new demand curve of D4. And again, let's highlight what's the impact on the total revenue. Price times quantity. All right, and let's use this color here. And we'll label these areas, area C, oops, area C and area D. Here we see total revenue was originally price of P3 multiplied by quantity demanded at Q4 which is equal to areas C plus D. But then as the demand curve, oh, that's incorrect. Let me go ahead and correct that. All right, we're at D3 originally. So P3 times Q3, which is equal to area C. Then as the demand for the inferior goods rises, total revenue increases to three times an increased quantity of consumption at Q4 equals to areas C plus D. So here total revenue rises. So as incomes falls, demand rises. So that is a negative relationship between the two. They move in opposite directions. Incomes falls, demand rises. And we see that total revenue goes up. All right, and that's the essential difference between the normal goods and the inferior goods. Normal goods, there's a direct or positive relationship between income and demand. And with inferior goods, there's a negative relationship between income and demand. So I'm going to go ahead and analyze this as we would for a paper, paper exam for the IB. As can be seen, we have two graphs. Graph A, illustrating the market for normal goods. Graph B, the market for inferior goods. We're measuring price as the independent variable on the y-axis and quantity as the dependent variable on the x-axis. We have four downward sloping demand curves in accordance to the law of demand. They will D1, D2, D3, D4. In graph A, we have a price set at P1 with a quantity demanded at Q1, point A, along demand curve D1. And graph B, we have a price set at P3 with a quantity demanded at Q3, point C, along the demand curve D3. Total revenue for normal goods is Total revenue one equal to price P1 multiplied by quantity demanded Q1 is equal to area A plus B, All right? This rectangular area here. And in the market for inferior goods, we see total revenue one is P3 times Q3, which is equal to service area of C. As a result of incomes falling in Singapore due to the 1997 Asian financial crisis, we would expect demand for normal goods to decrease from D1 to D2. Price is held constant at P1. There's a redu reduction in the quantity demand for Q1 and Q2 along the new demand curve of D2, which is at point B. The impact in total revenue would be that total revenue would fall. Now total revenue is P1 times Q2, which is equal to the surface area of A. In the graph for inferior goods, as incomes falls, demand for the inferior good rises from D3 to D4. Price is held constant P3, but there's an increase in the quantity demanded at Q4 point D. That leads to an increase in total revenue. Since at uh, as demand is increased, price of P3 multiplied by the quantity of Q4 is equal to areas C plus D. So to summarize, we can see that as incomes falls, demand falls for normal goods, leading to a fall in total revenue for those firms. And as income falls for inferior goods, I'm sorry, as income falls, demand for inferior goods 
rises, leading to an increase in total revenue. If you have any questions, feel free to comment, and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.